and welcome into episode 24 of Cosmic Kool-Aid. I'm your host, Corey Short. I have none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Gentry is in the building. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing great, Corey. It's been a while since I've seen you. I think it's uh, been two years. It's been, been a couple of years, man. Yeah. So uh, me and Kevin met through uh, his work with the barn at Paint Fork. He's a good friend of, of ours and Eddie Harwood and uh, those guys over there do a great job. And he he uh, he's been the incredible graphic designer behind the billboards and all the all the beautiful marketing that you've seen come out of the barn. That was all Kevin, and uh, really such an important part of the music business. Uh, yeah, a very yeah. undervalued part of uh, the music business, but marketing in general. Yeah, yeah, marketing is part of every business. I, I think there are some businesses out there that that really don't pay attention to it, and, so, and when you finally give them something that they can chew on suddenly the, the whole world of marketing opens up to him but yeah so we're going to dive into all the work that you do and it's ah, ample you do you 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 uh you got your hands in a lot of things but just for a minute let's focus on the graphic design did uh did you go to school for that no that was just a personal interest that you it's just a hobby yeah it's but i've been 30 years yeah well, <laughs> that's quite the well, hobby well, yeah well and and <clears throat> I'm also an architect, and, and so a lot of the graphic stuff came from uh, the, the need and the desire to have really interesting presentations to my clients. Right. And so I had to start picking up software like Photoshop a uh, long, long time ago. Um, and so I think that's where it, it, it came into play, and, and you, you start looking at things like that, and you're like, I, I, I really like that. You know, I, I can really, really... I think part of it is because in the in the world of architecture and design and construction, there's just so many rules and regulations and authorities that have jurisdiction over what you do. But when I got into the graphic design stuff, there's there are no rules. Yeah, I mean there there are always fundamentals, just basic design principles. Sure, and I I love doing design work. I I really do, and I, I used a, a super basic program for twenty years that I got from Office Depot called The Print Shop. It was I've just a basic, it. basic, but something about the the, the Adobe format, I, I just can't wrap my mind around it. I can't, I can do basic video editing with Premiere, but Photoshop, it, I just, it looks like Chinese to me. Yeah. I've never been able to cross over that original hump. Well, um, and, and I, I think part of the, the reason for that is, uh, you know, 30 years ago, everything, including Adobe Photoshop was, pretty limited in all the tools but but adobe uh, in in as a, co a corporation has been super aggressive through all of those years and every six months to a year they roll out something new and it's it just becomes this monster of a program but if you if you uh, subscribe to the creative cloud suite that they have now it, now it's not just the program they have 20 30 apps yeah um and it it, it does become overwhelming if you don't stay on top of it what is the uh, what would you say the most important projects you've worked on as a designer? Oh my goodness, what a question! Um, like I, for example, I, I say that thinking in my head about like the Confederate Railroad redesign you did for yeah. their logo and right. Well, tell me about that specific because that was a monster in it, itself. It was a freebie too. Um, I, I it was during the pandemic. Yeah, and um, uh, I. It's it's hard thing to get into to describe why you would undertake something like that, or it's even harder to describe why it would take so long. Like what's it, you're just recreating what they already have, but there's a whole dictionary of conversation about something that was an analog or a hard copy in the '80s that someone's taken a photograph of, and now they think they have something that's truly digital, and that's it's just not true. So I was trying to take their logo into a true digital format and um a lot of people that kind of saw that going on didn't really understand what what it, it, it it's on facebook now why is it not digital i said well think of it this way if you walk outside to a mcdonald's sign take your iphone and take a picture of the golden arches it's digital right that is not at all the content that mcdonald's uses to produce commercials or or menus or it, it's not even remotely the same thing they they have let's call it the original Whereas what you have is just a photograph of you just have a photograph, same as taking the photograph of the Great Smoky Mountains. It's it's not really uh, a truly digital uh, in every aspect. But back to the the logo itself, the band did not ask me to do that. I just because I had so much work with music venues and so forth. I they're they're 
logo would come often up often and and when i would try to put it into something i, I have a kind of a quality level that i, I want to maintain and their logo was just i and i did not check i those just boxes. have to i just have to tell the truth they <laughs> did not check so i was like you know and it's an interesting logo for, for all the the uh, elements in it and so i was like i I need just. I'm going to use this as a demonstration on on what on before and after, and what's interesting is I see that logo all the time on the internet now that people have pirated, um, and I did something to it. I won't tell you what it is, but I, that makes me allow allows me to 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 know it's mine. Now the band never endorsed it. The band has never used it. Um, uh, it's always you know other venues or or fan groups or things like that. But uh, that particular redesign, which you can go on YouTube and, and find it. You can just type in uh, my name, Kevin Gentry, um, on YouTube and, and just say Confederate Railroad or something. It'll, it'll come up. It's the only one. Um, and uh, <clears throat> what's interesting about that, it's a 30-second video, but it actually covers, uh, I think it was, um, <sighs> Corey, it's crazy if I tell you. You're not you're not even going to believe me. I think it was, it was like 400 hours. I was going to say 400 hours. Though. Yeah, and, and I mean, thank goodness for that. <laughs> the pandemic right because right. th- if it hadn't been for that uh um i suppose that would have never happened but, how, m- how many hours into that project you were like shit what have i done <laughs> at, at any point would i you never wish- think about that no i never think about that and i'll tell you why so one of my personal mottos and my wife Rhonda will laugh about this because she knows it's true one of my personal mottos is it, it does not matter what i'm talking about if it's if it's work or, or, or hobbies or whatever. I, I have this scene and it, and it goes like this. It will not defeat me. I have lived by that forever. Now, sit-ups are not included in that. Um, I've never been able to do it. What, uh, what is so. it that triggers that, that response in you? What is it that makes you I, you makes know, it that important uh, to you? I, 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 I don't know. I just, I have this thing that I, I can't leave things undone. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that if you were able to dive into every aspect of, of the things that I've done, probably more personal stuff, you could say, well, you didn't really finish this or you didn't really. But that's not true. When it comes to something that I feel like I'm responsible to you for, I always say I would rather uh, underpromise and overdeliver than to do the, the opposite, which is overpromise and underdeliver. So there's something about that not not finishing, not completing, or under-delivering. And, and it also plays into my personality. I'm, I'm very much a perfectionist. So, perfectionist. <laughs> so, let's <laughs> let's talk about another project regarding that subject. Um, you did a, a recent logo for uh, Pisgah High School? Or what, what? Oh, Tuscola. Tuscola. Yeah. Tell me about that. It's interesting because there are some updates on that. Okay. Um, not not the updates that you might think, but I'll, I'll go into it a little bit. Um, I can't reveal too much because because I, I have a meeting tomorrow on it, um, or excuse me, Sunday. Um, so yeah, so so I live in Dallas, Texas now. I don't live in in North Carolina. Um, but right after uh, my wife and I moved to Dallas from Asheville, there was a a, a lot of news in the newspapers and various internet. Uh, news sites around the area about how Appalachian State University had kind of sank their claws into Tuscola over a dispute of um, copyright infringement on their uh, logo. Now, both sides argue that they're the original creators of this uh, Mountaineer logo. And um, eventually, I mean, it literally went on for about 18 months, going back and forth with attorneys for both sides and the school board in, in, in Tuscola. And um Finally, somebody, I believe it was the bank, Telco, and the school board got together and said, well, why don't we just do a little $500 prize and let citizens just come up with something else? Well, that's right down my alley. And and I, I do stuff all the time in my spare time. I don't really know what that is. But 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 I, I, when I find something that's of interest, you know how it is. You, you'll wiggle it in, you know. So I sat down, and I think I designed 15 or 16 different logos. And I started to cement them all. Because I thought they were all pretty good, and then I thought, nah, I'm just going to do one. Um, and but but what I did was uh, I did a couple things that were a little unconventional. Number one, I I did a presentation board, and all you had to do was submit a logo on a piece of paper. There, there were really no there were no rules at all, other than the colors and a few things. Um, but if you know good logo design, uh, it, it, it's always it always has to be thoughtful and considerate of all of the different 
in, I'll call them environments, environments that that logo will exist in, whether it's inside an, a yearbook or an annual, or if it's in a newspaper ad, or if it's on a digital billboard, or if it's on a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt. I mean, you've done this enough to know that if you design a logo and you put it on a white t-shirt, it looks different than when you put it on a black t-shirt. So the logo has to be thoughtful in how it handles that. So what I did was I put together a, a really nice presentation board for them. Um, and I showed that this logo could exist in, I think it was 14 or 15 different environments. And I, and I represented the same logo. Well, there was no chance for the contestants to actually speak to the school board and, and present the product. You, you just had to send it in and whatever happened, happened, right? Well, they were confused. I submitted f one, one presentation board with 15 logos on it, but they were all the same logo. They thought, they thought it was 15 logos and they had to choose one. So they chose variation number five. And I and I just emailed them behind the scenes and said, it, it's the same logo. But that all your other participants, when they send in their logo, you have to, if you have the right mindset, you have to say, well, what would that logo look like on a green shirt or, or whatever? You, you make up the environment. And, uh, of course, I never got to actually speak to them about that. <clears throat> and ultimately, my logo did not get chosen. I think I think it finished second, but it finished in the top four. There were, it was in the final four. I think one of the problems with the logo that I designed is, for whatever reason, it reminded them of yet another Appalachian State logo, which was this old guy with a long flowing beard. And even though my my logo um, was completely original, they thought it was too close. So they took my logo, even during the contest, and actually submitted it to Appalachian State to give to ask Appalachian State to give their blessing on my logo. Just my logo, because it, they just thought it was too close. I can show you both of them. You can find them on sure. on, on the internet. Sure. But but anyway, um, and I, I I was over here screaming, going, you don't need their permission. My, my artwork is 100% original. And and that's the way the copyright law works in the United States. If you if it is truly yours, you didn't trace it. You didn't you didn't even look at somebody else's logo. I mean, you just sat down and said, "This is what I want to do." Mm -hmm. You don't need anybody's permission. I can't blame them for doing some due diligence. So I'm, sure. not, I'm not upset sure. about that. But what I am saying is that I think at some point it might have scared them just enough to say, "We let's just stray away from that. We don't stray away from an, another future uh, uh, problem." So uh, I enjoyed the the contest, um, and and ultimately they didn't choose it. What is interesting is that the winner that they have chosen, it's been, it was last February, so we're approaching a year now. And um, as far as I know, they've yet to use the winning logo on anything. I still have some friends that are in the, the Waynesville, uh, Tuscola area, and they all, and I, they, didn't, they didn't even know I was into graphics. They, they're just, we're just lifelong friends, and, and they keep in touch with me and, and, and said, we've yet to see a single t-shirt with a new logo on it. And so someone said, well, you know, maybe, maybe they'll come back around. And, and I said, well, maybe they will. Well, they did, kind of. I, I can't say it's not the high school, but I can say that there's an organization in Waynesville uh, that wants to use the logo. So we have struck a deal. So I, I have um, submitted that logo to the United States Copyright Office to get official uh, a trademark on it. Um, and I did that. I'm more than happy to... To, to release it to them, but I did it because, you know, when, and, and this is, this, this nobody's being nefarious, but sometimes your local high schools don't understand that if I, if I take a logo and I give it to you at the print shop just to make a round of t-shirts and then we get our t-shirts, we sell them, we move on, but that print shop has got that logo. Sometimes they don't understand that they can't, when somebody else, like a youth league or something is trying to, 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 they need their logo. They'll be like, oh, well, we've got it. We've got a copy of it. Here you go. You can have it. No, you can't. You know, and, and it, it's, I'm not even trying to, to make money off of it. What I'm trying to do is is say, look, just, just be, you've already been in one legal battle with Appalachian State. So you need to protect your own stuff. So you get, and so if they came to me and said, we want it, I'd be like, well, let's work out a deal. I'll, I'll, I'll transmit the copyright to you, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, Sunday, I'm meeting with a group that wants to use it. Um, I, part of me is like, well, I've got, I think I've got 18 other versions, none of just that one. I, I literally have, I think 18 Good. unique logos that I did. Um, but, uh, I really enjoyed it and, and I enjoyed sending stuff to them. I think I overwhelmed them a, a little bit. They, 
I think they had 250 submissions. Um, <clears throat> of which you can imagine, like I'm sure like the, the elementary schools got together in the classrooms and, and submitted stuff like that too. But part, part of me thinks that uh, they didn't quite want that level of, of response. I, I, I don't know why I say that. Just uh, it, They it, weren't it feels, expecting that level of professionalism. Like I, it almost feels disrespectful to me. Like if, if, if you wanted to make it a student-led contest or... Right. You know, young young artist. You know, say so. Put that, that, that up front. That's right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was one of my complaints from the very beginning is that there were not quite enough rules. So it's okay to say it has to be black, gold, and white. You know, whatever, and and it has to have the word mountaineer in it. Obviously, uh, that's their mascot. But at some point, if you're only going to present the school board with an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, say that. Right. I'm not going to waste my time. I even sent them. I, I sent them helmets. With the logos on the helmets, you know, I, I have one for my own, for my my office, um, but that was all. Just Is that a, where you went to high school, Tuscola? No, okay. no, I'm from Waverville. Um, uh, went to North Bunker, okay. um, eighty three to eighty seven. Old guy here, <laughs> so uh, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and and I would do it again. I, I over my lifetime, I've entered a lot of competitions. There's something about a competition that I kind of like to step into, um, and it, it 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 makes you speed up your work and and. Uh, and it has some, I mean, I think the, the, the payday on that, if you won, was 500 and everybody else got nothing. So you know what I got. Um, that, but I wasn't even, I think I spent more than 500 on it. You know, so I, I was in the, I was in the red <laughs> from day yeah, one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it was not about, about the money. Well, uh, man, that, that, it was such a good looking logo. And, and, and at this point I've already edited and I've put them on screen while you were talking about them. So. Oh, okay. Our guests have seen oh, them at right. this point, uh, and they uh, are. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just you're, you do such outstanding work. Now, you said you filed for a patent, or a, no, so uh, uh, so a copyright, copyright. Um, but but everything in the everything that is original done by any citizen in the United States is automatically copyright written, copy copyright protected, copy written. Um, in case you didn't know that. Um, however, there is an additional step that you have to take to actually file the documents with the United States Copyright Office. And the difference is, if somebody were to come after, uh, if you were to go after someone who had infringed on your copyrights, if you have not filed with the copyright office, uh, there's only so much monetary uh, uh, gain that you there's, you can only sue for so much. Right. But if if it's on file the copyright office, then it's a huge huge now, difference. Is this the first piece of work you've had that copyright yeah. protection put on? Uh, uh, yes, okay. it is. It is. I, I have had uh, other architectural work that that w was copywritten, but as far as graphics, yeah, is it a pretty easy process to send off? And it was surprisingly easy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it cost me eighty five dollars, and um, because I had all the paperwork, or I didn't, I didn't have the paperwork done for this purpose. But all the paperwork that they asked for, I just already had it. So for me, I think two hours uh, online, and I was done. So it was, it was interesting. You have any? Uh any other like a uh, business uh, patents, anything else you've created? No, you know, Corey, I am the guy that would love to, to say that I have a patent on something, but I, and I have a feeling you're going to go get one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, and, and, and so I don't, uh, stuff that we're talking about, I, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's able to be patent because that's, that's what the copyrights for patent is for inventions. Uh, and I would, I would totally be the kind of guy to, to do that. Um, um, but I, I never have. I guess you could put that on bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, we, we know what your, your main side hustle is. Tell <laughs> us about your, your main hustle. Well, which one? Uh, <laughs> you are an architect. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll cover that first. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's just cover the list. Cause, cause that's what you and I have talked about more, more, sure. more than one occasion. But so I, 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 my primary source of income has always been architecture. I'm, I'm a licensed architect, um, but over over the years, especially over the last uh, 15 years, uh, I've had other interests. And for example, I would like to be a property developer, but I want to be a property developer for myself. So the idea was that I would would be able to design something, be a contractor, general contractor, build it, and then a real estate agent to be able to take that and, and sell it. And, and I would have all the licenses. I wouldn't really need to depend on anyone, you know, outside of subcontractors and tr trade specialists and things like that. So uh, I, I have I have my um, license in, in architecture in multiple states in the United States. And then about 2014, I started 
getting into the, the, the general contracting stuff. So then I, I became a, a, a commercial general contractor. And then if you, even if you're going to, to design a, a, or, or build a subdivision, for example, you've got to have infrastructure and things like that. So I went out and got my public utilities license. So I got a, a public utility contractor's license. Um, and then after that, I went and got my real estate license. Uh, so I have all that, but, but even within all of that, you're a genius. No, no, <laughs> Man, no, that's no, no. What a, what a great model. You, you, you cut out all the middlemen. Well, yeah. And, 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 uh, it, and then the banking. I never even happened. thought about how it all worked together. Now it all makes sense. Yeah. And, and well, and, in 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 within each one of those, uh, literally the, the construction business, and the architecture business, there are sub businesses that, for example, uh, I also do uh, forensic uh, expert witness uh, cases for several law firms in Asheville. So if you if you have a building that burned down and they have to the court or somebody suing someone, um, I, I could put together the report uh, and determine. I, I don't know uh, the fire department, fire marshal will determine the cause of the fire, but I. But I take that further and say, okay, well, if it was the microwave that started it, you know, was it by the electrical wiring job? Um, so I, I write reports for uh, legal reports for expert witness testimony and things like that. Um, so, would, like, would you go in, let's say a house burned down, mm -hmm. and would you be the one to actually go in, inspect, and find fault? Um, no, the fire, I, I'm going to say the fire marshal would do that. Um, uh, I think by the time I come along, there's already finger pointing going on and there's a lawsuit that is involved and okay. people kind of want to get to the bottom of it. Um, I mean, I, I'll give you an example of, of something that I recently did. Um, uh, again, can't reveal too much, but uh, had a, an attorney that had a case where uh, a couple had purchased a modular home. And what they were expecting was the foundation to be built and then these these let's say Lego blocks of, of homes come in, get set into place and they give you the keys and drive away. And it, it didn't turn out that way. And uh, there was, I mean, it was, uh, I think, I think I worked on it for two years. If you can believe that or not, just, just yeah. my part. Um, and so what I'm basically trying to, to help the client do is understand, did they do something wrong in the, in the process to, to create this, the end result not being what they thought, or did the person that was the general contractor to build this structure, not live up to their end of the contract. So I get copies of the contract. I, I get photographs of, of what's there. I go out and take my own photographs, measurements, what, whatever need be. And then I sit down and, and kind of put it all together and say, okay, here's where I find fault with, with and, and, and name names. And you, and you have to be, even though you're working for, you know, either the plaintiff or the, or the defendant, you still have to be unbiased. You have right. to, you have to try to say, well, you know, this is what you did. This is what they did. Ultimately, I don't make a decision on whose fault it is. I just, I, I do have a conclusion conclusion in the report and then it would be up to the, the judge and jury to, to decide what that is. I actually, I really, I really like that, that part of it. I mean, a lot, I think a lot of people will get bored. I mean, some, I think the last report I did was over 500 pages. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's kind of tedious and long. Um, but I, I, I find it a, a little interesting. Um, so that's just one of the, what do you love things. doing the most? What, what I like doing what I want to do the most. So I know well, let me, let really me rephrase answer. that. Yeah. What income producer do you love? The well, most? that's a, that's a, that was a, that's a great segue into saying, uh, okay. So a lot of the things I do are like regulated occupational licensing things. And then a lot of things I do are hobby. Some things I do pay and some things I don't, don't pay. So income revenue producing, um, I, I really like, this is vague, but I really like design stuff. I like problem solving. Um, and, and I think that when people get to know me, they're really surprised that problem solving does not mean architecture. It does not mean um, graphic design. It, it, it means I you can give me any challenge. I mean, I, I, I write databases. Uh, Eddie and I uh, uh, at the Barnet Pink Fork, uh, this was 14 years ago, he, he was we were having a conversation and suddenly he realized that I have this ability to write uh, algorithm and code and script and database. And we got into all this automation uh, stuff for, I and mean, we still do some of that. Um, but the reason I bring that up is because ultimately it, 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 if you said to me, the, the famous Leonardo DiCaprio line here, sell this pen, you know, I, I like solving the problems. It doesn't matter if it's furniture design or, 
forensics or so it's it, that's not an exact answer other than to say that I like to be challenged. So whatever 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 do challenge you, you can do bring you ever to me. have to sell yourself or are they always coming to you? They're no, always they're. coming to me. I yeah. mean, I, I think uh, if I put myself out there more, it'd probably be a little bit of a floodgate. Yeah. You, you know, um, but you know it's interesting. Even the people that I know, I, I can I can sit here and I can tell you, Corey, anything that you can imagine. If I, I can't even think of it right now on the fly, but anything that you can imagine, if you find yourself in a pickle, like I, I just can't figure out how to get out of this, that, then I'm not going to say I'm your guy, but I give but you like I give anybody a, a run for their money, <laughs> right. and, you know. Um, and, and so uh, I, I do find it interesting that sometimes uh, let's just use architecture as an easy example that people will come to me and be like man i just i just built my house what a pain in the rear end that was and i'm like you didn't call me man i forgot you were an architect you know and i'm like silly you (laughs) you know uh um and i I, it, it really doesn't matter graphic design forensics um helping with music venues uh i think Eddie's got a new restaurant over in Mars Hill, Jimmy's Munchbox. Yep. I helped him with that. Yep, I got to get over there and check it out. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went there uh, Wednesday. It was pretty good. I'm excited for him. That's great. Who's yeah. uh? He's a crazy guy. He's always into stuff. Yeah, so it's on site at the barn? Or? No, 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 no. So so Jimmy's Munchbox is on Carl Eller Road in Mars Hill, the main, the main road okay. right, right near Mars Hill uh, University. Um, I mean, from the, from the highway, it's half mile. Awesome. Uh, you'll find a Subway restaurant. It's in the back parking lot. Of, of the subway restaurant there off Carl Eller Road. But, but he's, you know, he'll call me next week. Got, I mean, Eddie and I have probably started six or seven businesses together, you know, some that you don't even know about. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we worked on, uh, gosh, public utilities companies. Um, uh, so I won't even say, I, I can't know. say enough, enough good things about Eddie. Great guy. Well, I can. It's limited, very limited. What I could say good about that guy. I'm yeah. kidding. He's he's, he he's been great to me. Uh, you know, I came into this and he he never, not for a second, treated me like a competitor. He, he opened up his arms to me and brought me in and taught me things. And um, and he's just been great. Yeah, he's he's, he, he's, and, and he's he, bailed he, me out of a couple of jams. Uh, I just man, he's just a ah, can't say enough. Yeah, and he he's a he's not only a risk taker, but he he one thing that he and I have in common is that our brains never stop. My brain never stops. Um, you have trouble I, sleeping because of that. I, I never have trouble going to sleep. Um, I rarely have trouble sleeping. It's just that I only sleep three or four hours a day. Yeah. I mean, I well, I know that you're busy enough, and and I was thinking about this last night. My favorite time is when all the noise stops. Whether that's work or people calling you, and you have a uh, you have a staff, so you've always got people that are tugging at your shirt tails, I'm sure. But uh, in fact, some of our conversations have always occurred late, late, late at night, and I know that's because you've the dust has finally settled. You've gotten the Corey time, and I'm doing the same thing, mm-hmm. and and um, and you're also three hours behind. Yeah, well, so I know well, if it's I'm, one a.m. here, yeah. you're you know that's prime time for you. Yeah, and and uh, um, but I, I'll be up to one, two in the morning, and then at six o'clock I'm up again. So <clears throat> no, I don't have trouble sleeping, but uh, I do have trouble shutting my brain down sometimes. The busier that I've gotten in in our businesses and in, in my career, the harder I I have had sleeping. Really, so really, I've had to use some cannabis products and different things to get yeah, to sleep yeah. at night because I. Yeah, I've noticed that you uh, have brought those up on your other podcast yeah, shows. Yeah, and, um, and I avoided it my whole life. I'm not a drug guy. I'm not a party animal. But you know, somebody offered me some uh, cookies. Yeah. When I first revealed a sleeping problem, and uh, never looked back. Really? So, yeah. it's, so it's been pretty consistent. To, oh, to, 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 yeah. oh, I don't know. that's interesting. Occasionally, high stress moments, I still can't shut it off. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, those do the job. Right. Yeah. Well, you got a lot on your plate. Um, and, and, you know, we talk about problem solving. Well, if you want to have problems to solve, do, do what Corey does. Just keep, keep loading, loading your wagon down. <laughs> Add more problems. <laughs> make the other one seem less problematic. I think, I think they call that self-inflicted, Corey. <laughs> oh, they do. And it, yeah. it definitely is self-inflicted. Right. But um, hey, you're trying to get ahead, man. I understand. Trying to, trying to make dreams come true. Yeah. And create something for, shoot at this point, for my grandkids, you know, um, 
My kids had a good life, though. Yeah. They had a good childhood. We had a lot of fun, and they never wanted for anything, but I, I'm still I'm still chasing. Yeah, well. Chasing that pie in the sky. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I, I, everybody's got a bucket list. <clears throat> sure. So uh, tell me about your family. You have a, a, a wife. I've met her. She's wonderful. Yeah, so so uh, Ron and I have been married 15 years. Um, she's from Texas, which is why we're in Texas now. Okay. Um, uh, I met her about 17 years ago in my neighborhood. I lived in Kenilworth, and uh, she had just moved in the neighborhood. And literally, I had a, a puppy, brand new black lab puppy, and um, I just purchased another house in the neighborhood and uh, was moving, just packing my car, moving stuff. And... Um, I knew everybody in the neighborhood walked out the front door to get my car. And here comes this person walk, just walking down the sidewalk, walking and the smallest little golden retriever puppy you've ever seen. And, and my dog was in the yard barking and uh, I, I just literally pulled out and I was like, I've never seen her before. So we started talking long, long story short, went on a date and, and that just kind of perpetuated. And uh, yeah. Um, and my, my sister and brother live in, in Weaverville, uh, actually, um, uh, my parents have both passed away within the last two years. So, uh, I've got a ton of family in the Weaverville area, uh, really, really, uh, rooted. Got some crazy relatives in the Weaverville area that I won't name names cause people might come after <laughs> me, but, um, but great. My, my mom's family, uh, she had, uh, there were total 14 siblings in her family. So exponentially large from that point and all of them just really great so I, I still keep in touch with a lot of them so great family awesome so i don't want to say how did you you find your way into doing with music because we know it was through the barn did you have any connection to music prior to the barn well you know i don't tell a lot of people this but i have hearing loss and so music has never never been my thing i, I don't know anything about musical instruments um I mean, even I don't even really go to concerts because of the, the the way the the sound works. So, music is the last thing on my list that I would have an interest in. That doesn't mean I hate it. I don't hate it. I mean, I in fact I would like to be more a part of it, but it's right. just limited, you know. Um, and uh, it, it's interesting. I I don't think Eddie will will mind me telling this, but he he came to me. I have an, another friend named Chris, um, and we we always just have lunch together and hang out for we were all self-employed and, and didn't have anybody tugging at us. So we'd have these two hour lunches and dang it, talk about stuff. And Eddie's brain never stops. And so he would, he would just come to me and say, Hey, I've got this idea. And, um, and I, I'm one of the things people have always come to me for is I, I don't want to really say I'm an inspirational speaker, but I'm a, I'm a supporter. I'm, I'm a, you can do anything. So if you came to me and you were having self doubt or, Again, this is part of the problem solving. I'd be like, Corey, we, we can do this. So here's what you got to do, you know. And um, Eddie came to me and said he 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 likes to kind of be a mover and a shaker in, in, in various circles. And sometimes he operates a little bit more under the radar than than, than people might know um, in, in a good way. So um, he came to me and he had this idea of creating a fundraising venue. So... We sat down at lunch one day and started sketching out some stuff, and, and um, he already had the structure. He just wanted to convert it. It was more uh, storage for commercial uh, construction equipment and things like that, and he just wanted to clean the whole property up. And so we did that. He, 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 when Eddie makes his mind up, it, it goes. And so before I knew it, he already had this place cleaned out, and he was doing all this stuff to it. And uh, it, 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 was, it was really only meant to be just a place to go and have a uh, dinner i mean it's not a restaurant just just a place to gather an event venue and so later he was like you know i think i think i want to turn this into a, a wedding event venue and and i said okay well let's do it and and so next thing you know we got a wedding chapel built and we we're having weddings and then all of a sudden and i'll never forget this and this was like uh th about thanksgiving 2018 eddie came to me and said <clears throat> I'm going to start a, a, a concert venue. And I'm like, okay, uh, we could get your stage designed and green rooms and, you know, all that stuff. And uh, when, when, when are you thinking you're going to have your first concert? And he said, April. And I went, uh, 2019? <laughs> and, and I mean, I, I shouldn't have even asked because the answer is yes. 
Uh, and so, I mean, we immediately went to work n naming it, setting up the LLC and um, getting the stage built and things like that. Um, and we did it. I mean, in, in April 11th or something like that, 2019, first concert, Confederate Railroad, which is Eddie's favorite band. He likes to tell everybody. Um, that's where that came into to play from the earlier conversation we had. But anyway, um, so that was my introduction to the music. Uh, thing. And, I, and I I learned a lot uh, behind the scenes that goes on because, as you know, there's a lot more going on that people can't see than there are that people can see. Right. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. It, it is a lot of work. And it's a, it's not only a lot of work, it's a lot of work for every for a lot of people. It's um, it's it's way more than 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 you. Eddie does a good job of trying to keep, I would say, uh, the the smallest crew that he can to, to try to keep it efficient. And know? he really, he really does, man. I, I remember that was one of the first things I noticed when I went uh, there. It was uh, like, yeah, he's and there, there's how many, how many security? Like, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's figured that part out for sure. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because of the virtue uh, of how his property works, how the barn at paint Fork physical terrain works. Um, uh, this is not necessarily true, but in concept, there's one way in and one way out. Security is a lot easier when there's one way in and one way out. That's just, it really does work in his favor in terms of just keep an eye on everything. And if there's a problem, all you got to do is go stand at the gate. Yeah. Whoever the problem maker is will come through eventually. And then that's when you have to handle whatever it is the problem is. But sure. yeah, I mean, I remember in 2019, when we first started, um, Gosh, we had a lot more staff, a lot more crew, a lot more gates, a lot more uh, back checking and, and all that. And, and over time, you kind of learn how it works and who can do what. And it just kept being parred down, parred down, parred down and until you finally kind of get it exactly where you want it. But that's, I guess you could say that's first timer. Now, who handles, does Eddie do all the talent buying there or do you do some of that too? All the what? All the talent buying. That's that's I have nothing to do with that. Okay. So that's all that's all Eddie. I mean, occasionally he will run things by me, but for the most part, uh, he and a few other people uh, who I don't necessarily think are in Asheville uh, handle all that. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, so tell me, uh, what do you got coming up soon? What big projects are you working on? <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm I'm working for a construction firm in Dallas, and the the. The jobs that we do are, they're, they're a national firm, and the jobs that we do are enormous. I mean, I think the average project that, that I work on is about $50 million. Um, And so uh, as far as that goes, I, I, I'm, I don't have any, you know, I don't, I don't control the income of, of the project. So I, I just kind of get assigned um, projects. For me personally, um, I think... I, I, not much. I, I it's, you asked earlier about do 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 I look for work or people come to me? Every time I think that oh, it looks like I, I don't have much going on this month. The phone starts ringing. So, in the last, uh, I would say since about 2017, every, every time there's a breather, there's a tsunami behind it, and so I don't have anything planned. I, I know that sounds a little crazy, but I, I really don't. I mean, uh, I. I what I find is if there's not something there, I go, I go looking for it. <laughs> right. You know, my, my, my brain never stops. That's kind of how I got into the, all the AI stuff. Yeah. Um, just a nice segue there into our next subject. Yeah. Yeah. Our so, favorite thing to talk about at one in the morning. Right. Right. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I, it, people would have no idea how much time I spend thinking about that stuff and not necessarily in, in a good way or in a bad way. It's just, it's really hard to get your head around it. Even, even I always say there's the people that have their finger on the pulse, which are the people that are building that industry, right? Well, we don't have anything to do with that. We don't, well, we're just citizens. And, and there are some citizens, I would put myself in that category that you, you're digging into it and constantly reading in it, constantly trying to find out what's coming, what's new. Um, it's like, it's coming in so fast. That oh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's dizzy trying to keep up with it. It was, I, I mean, at some point you just have to say you, you, you can't keep up with it. But that's the nature of AI. It's so, it, it, technology, just since Microsoft DOS, 
has been so uh, logarithmic and and how and exponential how it's hit the, the 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 citizens of the world, and AI blows that out of the water. I like, I can remember like less than a year ago, you and I were talking about some things, and um, I started tinkering around with it, and I look back on it now. I'll just use Photoshop as an example. So so. I don't want to give away too much because I might cut my pay rate down. <laughs> um, but I will say that that a lot of companies like Adobe are super aggressive with incorporating the AI into their tools. So a, a small example that I could give you is if you came to me and you said, look, I, I want to make a marketing trifold or brochure or something like that. This is the main image. And sometimes people want to go out and get a professional photographer and have this, you know, perfect lighting and all this stuff. And sometimes you can't, you know, um, but you could bring me a picture of your business or your whatever it is you're selling. And I mean, because because for the company that I work for in Dallas, I actually did this. So we, we had this beautiful dam that we built, but we never had that perfect photograph of the dam to put into our marketing materials. So the best photograph that we had literally had cranes, people on ladders. The, where the water should have been was just a bunch of mud, but it was just the only photograph that we had. I could show you that picture, and I did that in Photoshop. Take take the cranes out, take the people out, take take the mud out, put water in there, and all that stuff would not surprise anybody that you could do that in Photoshop. We see stuff like that all the time. Right. In, in fact, you see stuff like that all the time, and you don't even know you're looking at it. Um, but artificial intelligence in the last 12 months has changed that so much. I literally used to be able to have to just manually take the mud off the dam and somehow... And it wasn't even that long ago that that option was available. Right. It's changing. Right, yeah. right. And so now, now I can literally go in and like draw... Just, it doesn't even have to be neat. Just draw a circle around the mud, hit a button, and it's gone. And it's crazy that artificial intelligence knows whether to paint in white beautiful concrete or water or bushes or trees. But every time it, I mean, within a couple of clicks, you're done. And the reason I say that is because to do this particular image, I'm thinking of one image that I did for my company would have taken me a week. I mean, a week of 40 hours of copy, paste, smudge, you know, what are, whatever the tools are that you're using. And now in 20 minutes, I'm completely done. It's it's insane, and, and 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 it's better than I could have ever done. So my my favorite use case so far is, um, we've got so between the two venues, I have four, five band performances per week, between the two venues, not counting big concerts. That's just indoor music, right? And I put into Chat GPT, <laughs> I own two music venues. With uh, two stages, we do um, these nights at venue one. We do these nights at venue two. And I need you to schedule the entire year of 2024 with these 18 bands. These 12 are country. These others are this. I need mostly country at venue one, less country at venue two, and go. Seconds. And it's scheduled my whole year perfectly in seconds. And then you got to go for an account for human changes and, you right, know. Right, 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 right. Oh, we wanted to do his birthday show, so let's move this one. You know, there's going to be tweaks to it, but, man, that saved me hundreds of hours. Well, Hundreds of hours. So one of the terms that I put out to, to the general public, and, and you will start hearing this term a lot, craft, prompt crafting. I had it backwards. Prompt crafting. So what, what that is, is, and I'm going to use your, your scenario as the example, the words that you put into artificial intelligence determine what comes out. So then you have to be careful, not careful, but thoughtful. And when it produces an a unexpected result, you have to go, oh, now I see what it's doing. It, 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 it forgot this. So now i gotta, I got to kind of rewrite that. Or if you just copy and paste it and change a couple of words, that's you're crafting the prompt. So now you see, and AI is everywhere. It used to be ChatGTP and a few things. Now there's, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of the open AI, uh, MidJourney, Discord, uh, uh, which is a server. But, but anyway, um, 
So now there are these people that are literally taking it upon themselves to become prompt crafting experts. And the more that you use it, the more you'll realize you are prompt crafting, whether you know it or not. But that that's just a, a term that goes along with it. it it's amazing to me that... that um, I'll give you a really great example. So there was this is on YouTube. You can find it. Um, there was a guy who took chat GTP in mid-journey. And he went into mid-journey and found like their mission statement. And then there's all these rules and stuff that like, how to use mid-journey and just basic setup stuff. Um, he copied all that from mid-journey, went over into chat GTP. And you know, Chat GTP uh, a year ago did not have imagery. You, you couldn't do they, you can do that now, but he pasted all this into Chat GTP and said, "I basically want you to become a Mid Journey expert." And then he he played the video of what this what it did, and it it, it, it so it's like the equivalent of taking a, a set of encyclopedias, and if you could copy all that data and stick it into to chat GTP or AI, you know, any any resource, suddenly it, it is automatically knows and remembers every single word in the entire set of the encyclopedia. And so this this chat GTP Im immediately became a mid-journey expert. And it, it's just like, okay, but now if you take that, if you think about it and you take that to the next level, well, that's exactly what why AI is literally going to I mean, I hate to use this word, but take over the world kind of thing, you know, because it, it never forgets what what you put into it. And so it, it's an amazing thing, but but uh, it's also a, a bad thing because it's going to replace a lot of jobs. Um, and a lot of people think this is still Hollywood chat. It's not. It's it's I tell you, it's impacting just about every job I can think of right now, except for a few. Oh, I can already list 10 or 12 things that I'm spending less on right. because of it. Right. And those are jobs that I'm not paying anymore. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So, and just on my low level, seeing it, it's, yeah, it's going to change the world. Yeah. And, well, and, and Ron and I have been traveling this week, obviously. And, and this is not really AI, but it's still uh, the, the automation. But now when you go into restaurants, you barely even get a white staff. You got to check yourself in. I, I had to check myself into a restaurant the other day. And when I got to the table, I had to QR scan my, my menu and I had to order it, pay for it on my phone. And then somebody in the back who was preparing my meal just showed up, put, <laughs> put the dish in front of me, and then I checked myself out and left. Where was this? Um, this was uh, this was uh, the Cincinnati airport, I believe. I, I took a picture of it, but, but uh, I was just like, wow. I, I couldn't even get a refill on my drink. Yeah, I went to a, a brewery like that in Charlotte this past weekend when we went to the Cowboys game. Right, and they had a they had a kind of a hybrid setup like that yeah. where you they 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 had a, a host that sat us right, and then we're just waiting for and no we got to walk up there and order right and yeah it's whole but 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 that's the negative part of it is I'll, I'll I love technology probably more than anybody but eventually you still want people to yeah. to, to be part of the equation but. AI, AI is going to replace a lot of that. I mean, I don't know how AI would replace stuff in a restaurant, but they'll figure it out. What Somebody do you think will. of the shakeup uh, at OpenAI this week? You know what? I didn't really know much about it. I guess I've been a little out of touch with that, but I did read about it yesterday. Um, so they brought the CEO back. Um, he, he got fired, and they brought him back. So I'll have to catch up on that. Maybe yeah, me too. Me I, I was just watching that before you came in, so... Uh, they did. They did bring him back for right. sure. Though, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah, that's probably smart. He, well, and I don't know what the issue was that they well, kicked him out well, to begin with. What they're saying is that they they fired him just a little bit too late because they just finished the open AGI, I guess, or the oh, I don't know. It's they have some there's some products. major development that is the reason they brought him back. They can't do it without him. Wow. So that's what I was watching before you got here. But wow. Wow. It's, it's, it, it, There's so many stories with regard to AI, and I, I don't think people, I really don't think people understand. I mean, I, I could tell you, if you're listening to this and you're kind of, you just keep he hearing the abbreviation AI, AI, and, and you're not really tuning into that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're in any danger, but I am saying that it's going to happen so fast that, that uh, you might be surprised uh, of what, where, where you'll see it. Um, impacting your life uh it's, it's it's really crazy 
you know, yeah. I, I tell you what, if you haven't watched this video, NVIDIA, the video game, uh, the video card uh, maker for computers and PCs. Mm -hmm. So look it up on YouTube. It's an NVIDIA presentation that happened. And the, the, the things that they do are, are already doing with AI, even though AI blows my mind, when I watched this particular video, I just, I could not believe it. And one of the things that they talked about was, um, well, there were three things, but the first one was um, they have a global company. And so they have these Zoom meetings, MS Teams meetings for, with people all over the world. And they already have built into their Zoom meetings. And I don't know if this is proprietary, but he demonstrated it. So this is all demonstrated on screen during his uh, corporate presentation. And you, if you're German or French, Greek, Japanese, whatever, wherever you, you're working, and you get on a Zoom meeting with 50 other people, everybody is an NVIDIA employee. Everybody gets to speak their native language and live and on the fly, AI converts their words to whatever language you want. So if you're listening in English and someone who is sitting in Tokyo is talking, you do not hear a lick of Japanese. You hear only <laughs> English. That's pretty cool. It's, 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 it's crazy. I mean, you can, we can all go on our, our, our smartphones sure. now and do Google translate, right. but, but there's an effort there. This is, there's no effort. Yeah. And it doesn't always work out. Like well, my, yeah. with my Filipino guys that I work with, I, I try to do that, and then I'll send them the translation, right. and right. they're like, "What is that? <laughs> that doesn't right. even sound right." But 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 if you think about it, Google Translate is probably it's like having a dollar, right. and artificial intelligence is like having a pot of gold, and the, the algorithms that they put into that. So it probably flows better. May may not be perfect, but it's learning everything. So. It's only going to get better. Yeah. The second thing that they did was, um, you know, if you were if you've ever been into video games, I was decades ago, not really now, but these point of uh, first person shooter games and point of POV games, point of view games, um, you know, you the, the, everything that's within that video world is is pre built, right? So if you go into a room, whether you go left or right, you, you probably have that option. But either way you go, that's a it's already scripted, designed, rendered set up all the codes there. Well, NVIDIA demonstrated that that's no longer the case. So now they build an artificial intelligence world. And for example, they show, they, again, they show this live. You walk up to a bar, just a standard bar, mm -hmm. and there's a bartender standing there cleaning his glass. And the conversation that you have with that bartender, you, you, you can type or talk anything that you want. He will talk, he'll have a complete conversation with you. But your goal in that game is to get the bartender to reveal where the bad guy is. And and there's no there's no script. You can say anything you want and through artificial intelligence he could tell you certain things. But then when you when if you go left or you go right, you go outside, inside, wherever you go, that's all generated as you go. And your experience and my experience in the same video game can be completely different. All because it's generated on the fly. And and that's it's just insane. So the last thing I'll tell you was, was pretty amazing. In 1995, I really got into 3D modeling because that's when uh, AutoCAD uh, really got into uh, a set of two-dimensional floor plans. Now now we can build a whole building in the 3D world. And um, I can remember it was all just wireframe. No no textures, no lighting, no nothing, really. It was just very platonic-looking stuff. And um, I remember the first, what they called ray tracing, rendering came out and that's just where the computer has the ability to calculate if your light source is here how does it bounce and reflect and illuminate all the other surfaces and you can assign surfaces like chrome or or linen or whatever it is you want and and i remember there was one picture and it was just of a of a standard desk and it had a computer on it maybe a a, a coffee mug with some pencils you know the, the kind of exterior light with some window louver shading um, and, and this, this computer rendered this and it just, at the time, it just looks so real. You're like, wow, we built that in the computer. So NVIDIA puts this exact image on the screen. I remember the image cause it was widely publicized. He puts this on the screen and he says, okay, in 1990, whatever, when this was first done with a IBM 486 computer, it took, it was like 77 hours to render this one image. And then when you were done, that's all you got. You, you can't move, you can't, you know, that's it. You can print it out and, and everybody has to be happy. And and we were. 
He said, now, now what I'm about to show you has never been done. We did not script this. We did not, this is not a video. When I press the play button, everything that you see is completely being created on the fly for the first time in the history of the world. So he, he starts with this exact image and he, and he hits a, a, the button on the keyboard, whatever. And all of a sudden it looks like you are turning and moving in the room. And so everything that is being rendered and created and shaded, it, AI guesses. So if you turn and there's a, a beanbag chair on the floor, that AI put it there. It, nobody, nobody put it there, but it's already rendered the color, the lighting, the shading, three-dimensional, everything. And, and he just kept turning and looking and looking out the window. And he said, every single bit of this is being rendered on the fly. Whereas one frame, just one frame, took 77 hours in 1995 and now this is being rendered at 30 to 60 frames per second and you can look at anything you want and nobody nobody programmed it nobody sat and designed it and and at that point i was like wow that <clears throat> is crazy so it's, here's i'm here's what i'm open for that happens in my lifetime i want to say happens in the next 10 years yeah i want two robots <laughs> Like, I've got my dude right now that's like my personal assistant. He is my Johnny on the spot. He's beside me. We're getting stuff done all day, every day. I want two of him Yep. that never need sleep, never need food, and we can just work our asses off, me and my two robots. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's the, it's and, and, and Tracy will stay along for the ride, too. I, I need him it's for the, the human part, but I want two of them everywhere I go. It's the Jetsons. Yeah. It's, it's the Jetsons' utopia. Um, Pull up to BP, you're pumping gas, you're going in to get me a drink, in and out, bang, bang. You know, like, yeah. that's what I'm waiting on. And the, the, the company that comes up with that will be the company that wins this battle. Yeah, and, 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 and here's what's crazy. It's possible now. The only thing that's not possible is, or, or not yet made, is, is uh, affordability of that. Um, but between the AI and stuff like Boston Dynamics, you know, all the robots that they've made. If you've never looked up Boston Dynamics, look up them, and they make, they make these crazy crazy robots but mainly for for military use but you, you know when you make the the, the military use the, the citizens are next and and you, you may not get the full functionality but everything they learn and all of that will get applied to your two robots uh, um in the future I, I don't know if you've seen um i think it was boston dynamics it may have been someone else but this was probably 10 years ago when these these drones started getting smaller and then they started making them autonomous and so they could they could make all these drones fly together, and in their programming and in their sensors, they're able to avoid colliding with one another. So they could they could give them all a destination, but how they got from point A to point B was fully automated, and how they got from point A to point B and also worked with the other drones to not collide was was autonomous. So all you had to do was say, "I want you here at this moment." And, and, and point B at this moment, and it figured out everything else. So now when you see these like Super Bowl halftime shows or when, for example, when Eli... You're Eli, talking about the lay the drone? Yep, yeah. yep, yep. So that's, that's, that came from that. And so, for example, when Tesla opened the, the Giga plant in, in Austin, Texas, they had that big show, and I think they had Abraham Lincoln's face and, and, and the flag and all, all of that. All, all you do is program at, at a moment in time if you wanted to show the American flag and one drone is red and one drone is blue. It, you, you just program the final position of it. And then you say, okay, 30 seconds later, I want you to look like a pine tree and everything in between the drones figure out. Hmm. It, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, your robots are coming. I, I don't know about in yeah. our lifetime, but <laughs> yeah, I hope so, man. I want, I, want, I just, I mean, just like you, just like Eddie, just like me, I, we, we, we love we love doing stuff yeah, we love yeah making yeah. things happen and the more yeah. things that I can make happen that is fulfilling to me yeah uh, it's not that I want to sit here and make them do everything it's that together we can do everything right you yeah know? it's it's a and I'm, I'm the same way it's 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 like being professionally fulfilled that's why I like the challenges that's why I like problem solving because I think the the end result of problem solving is productivity. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I, I love just putting things out there and, and, and 
letting people, you know, enjoy what, whatever that is. I mean, like at the beginning of, the, of this conversation, you, you said something about you, you do all the graphics and stuff for, for the barn. And, and I, I think a lot of, most people know that, but, but it's never been publicly like announced. Yeah. And, and, but that's only because I, I like watching people, you know, either enjoy the concerts or trying to see how many tickets that we could sell or, or whatever. It's, it's just a challenge, but but Eddie, Eddie definitely likes being productive, and and I like being productive, and and I'm I'm sure that's why you and I have a lot of, a yeah. lot in common. So is Eddie much of a tech guy? Does he? It, yes, Eddie Eddie loves technology. He he gets mesmerized by it, but uh, I think he's kind of a, the the end the end user of end users, and, and what I mean by that is if 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 it's uh, if it confuses him at all, he'll let it go on a little longer until they simplify it, you know. But he he loves if you if you could talk to him about it, mm-hmm. he he loves it. Like he and I have talked about artificial intelligence and, <clears throat> and, and 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 how it helps and stuff, and and it gets his mind going. And he'll text me and say, "Hey, can you make it do this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man." And he'll say, "Well, send me an example of that," and and it just blows him away. Um, so he he really likes it. Um, I I would have never thought that you could get Eddie into chat gtp but i didn't introduce it to him by the way um I, in fact because i don't even have a chat gtp account okay. um i've used it like the trial version and stuff but um eddie likes that it really helps uh kind of craft out a statement like a press release or something like that without having to to cross your t's and dot your i's and things yep. like that so he he one day he he contacted me i can't remember what the example was but he he, he sent me something and i knew that he did not write it. And, and he wrote back and he goes, I wrote that in chat GTP. And, and so I, I was like, he's look at, look at him go. He's using that. Trust me. If AI has got to Eddie Harwood, it's a full, it's full send already. So I, uh, so I, I enjoyed yeah. blowing people's minds there in the beginning Yeah, before I went, well, me and you were hip to it before most people were. And I would, people were like, I'm going into a meeting with a, you know, a behavioral therapist for teens. Wish me luck. And I, you know, like the post is one minute old and I have commented a book <laughs> on how to have a meeting with behavioral therapists yeah. <laughs> and, and like within two minutes and she's like, what the hell? <laughs> like, right. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you, uh, if I didn't do something like that, like for example, to, to Eddie, I'll send, write something like that. And he knows that yeah. it's, it's not AI. He goes, yeah. ah, that's just Kevin beating the keyboard. Yeah. Now um, even my staff started, like, did you have chat GPT write that? Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, um, and it's it's great, but it's also scary. It is it, the it, authenticity of anything is going to be questioned. I was just about to say that. So, so um, I'm good friends with the talent acquisition manager at the corporation that I work for, um, and he no longer can tell what his resumes are authentic or not. Um, and I think ultimately, what you're going to see, because this is this are actually already exists in Photoshop a little bit. What you're going to see is. The, AI can take over and convince even the, the 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 every person that it's real that it's not AI. That's 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 the trick. It, you, you're looking at something, either a picture or a paragraph from AI, and you you do not even realize that it is, has no human connection at all because it's fooled you, right? And um, I, I've seen. Well, I'll give you an example. YouTube. Any YouTube video you go on now, if you hear the spoken word, now, right now, you can kind of tell that the voices are a little robotic, but they're getting better and better. In fact, the last time I looked at voice recognition for uh, AI, uh, AI now is smart enough to hear just three seconds of your voice, and it can speak like you with all your mannerisms, all your your your, I don't I'm not a speech person, but all the uh, the way that you pause, when you would pause, when you would stutter, when you would you know, it can mimic all that with only three seconds of recording of your voice. Wow. That's that's crazy. So, uh, you all the stuff that you hear on YouTube now, people talking, chances are it's not, it's not the owner of the channel, narrating that documentary. So yes. Yeah. Well, man, I uh, I sure do appreciate you coming into town and hanging out with me. Well, I appreciate talking about that. some of these things we've we've been working on and toying with for a while. Yeah, I I and, uh, we've been talking about doing this for a long time, and then then I uprooted and moved, and so it's been probably two years that we first talked about doing this. So I appreciate you having me on 
having yeah. me on here today and always willing to help you any way I can. I appreciate um, you so much, uh, man. Uh, I, uh, you, uh, I appreciate that. If I had more people like you around me, I'd be further along. <laughs> I tend to think. <laughs> yeah, you, I you, need more. I need more Kevin Gentry's and Eddie Harwoods in my circle for sure. But you, uh, you run into people occasionally. You're like, man, where were you five years ago? Yeah. You know. So I appreciate that, and and it's true. I'll, I'll help you any way I can, and 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 I, I've always I've always been that way. I, I find myself occupying what should be my free time trying to help 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 people and like i say i I'm, I'm always trying to encourage people and and don't don't get yourself down push push you can you can you can do it um so that's that's been well, a little bit of my kevin my power kevin sent me a, a real nice uh well kevin designed the silverado's music park logo i did yeah it's a beautiful beautiful logo i'm so thankful for it and kevin did that for me as a gift when my son passed away yeah and uh, that means so much to me, dude. It really, really does. I, 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 and, and, and believe it or not, it, it wasn't the timing of that was was uh, interesting, and 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 it kind of had some purpose there. But I had had that logo in the back of my mind for over a year, and I just said, you know what, I, I'm just going to sit down and do it. Cool. Um, uh, so the, the timing of it was 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 pretty good. So I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, you crushed it, man. It's a beautiful logo. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, Mark. All right, folks. This is uh, episode 24 of Cosmic Kool Aid. This has been Kevin Gentry, architect, graphic designer, and just an overall great guy. Appreciate that. Uh, great steward of the community and big help to Eddie out of the barn at Paint Fork, and has been a big help to me with some stuff as well. So I thank you guys, and thank you for coming on. Right. I hope safe everybody tra- has a has a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, and safe travels back to uh, Dallas, and we'll see you next time. Okay, Corey, thank you for having me. Thank y'all. We'll see you next time.